Hello YouTube, my name is Plazukas, and this is going to be on Dr. Disrespect. You've probably seen the tweets now that apparently news is going to come out, information is going to come out, documents are going to come out to suggest, and it was alluded to in the email that was sent just before Dr. Disrespect's statement, that some Twitch employee was presenting themselves as a 17-year-old person and basically tricking, catfishing, whatever else you want to call it. Dr. Disrespect, and that they were an actual adult, they were hired by Twitch or some employees of Twitch as this conspiratorial, as this vendetta against Dr. Disrespect guy bomb because, or beam, because essentially they wanted them off the platform. And even if that is the case, it is indefensible, okay? And here's why. Someone in that position, someone in the position of, um, that is the top five content creator on Twitch that has that much notoriety and that much publicity, regardless if they're married, regardless if they have kids, regardless if it's an adult, you have to understand the dynamics of power here, the dynamics of influence and manipulation that somebody at Dr. Disrespect's level elicits, okay? And if you're not willing to even have that conversation, then you are at the very least, suggesting that it's okay to have that dynamic. It's okay to be a CEO of a company, to have an intern that is 18 years old. Let's say just turned 18 the day that she became an intern for the company. It's okay for that CEO to go to that intern who wants that job, who wants a position at the company, to be sexually assaulted, to be sexually advanced by the CEO. And for that power dynamic to be leveraged to be able to get that that intern to have sex with that person or to do favors for that person, you're suggesting that that is okay. Let's be very clear. For a very long time, that was something that was okay. That even if reported would just be an allegation, cops would not charge anybody with it, and, you know, all the victimization, all the trauma or whatever else that occurred because of that would just go on. Jeffrey Epstein, Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, all of those people. It wasn't until 2018, 2020, and now I guess a little less, but still the same. When the Me Too movement happened, that obviously accusations were taken more seriously. And some people were unfortunately found guilty or charged when there wasn't enough evidence and they should not have been. It was an overreaction, clearly. If you're criticizing that, I totally understand that. We need to have all the information and no one is saying, or at least I'm not saying, that Dr. Disrespect should be charged because there may not be enough information. We don't know. But by his own admission, he said that he spoke to a minor, an individual minor, and that it, the conversations went too far. I don't think this position's defensible at all. I think it is indefensible. All I'm trying to do is understand the logic, and if that logic is sound, then you have to understand how it applies to everything else that happens. And if you actually think that, then I would have to question your history are you yourself a predator i know that's not the right logical conclusions but i have to think about this i think if you're in a power dynamic yourself a ceo um a business leader uh a business owner who leverages your power your influence over somebody else if that continuously happens on a daily basis and like you are obviously entitled to your opinion but, and it technically it's not illegal until there is a victim. And so if nobody comes forward and, you know, accuses you of anything, then it's not illegal, even though it is illegal to sexually harass, sexually assault somebody. But if that's your logic, then I think you need to reconsider it. I think you need to look deep inside yourself and ask yourself, is that what you should be doing as someone who is in that position. And if, if it is, then you are no different than a predator, then you're no different than a pedophile, then you're no different than any, anybody else that you probably 
are are critical of because you're critical of something. You're critical of people who are trying to say that Dr. Disrespect is guilty before being proven that. You're assuming his innocence, right? And it's just an oxymoronic statement when in reality, Dr. Disrespect is self-admitted to the fact that he did it. And before that, nobody called him a predator. Nobody called him any of these things. But once you admit to something like that, which Dr. Disrespect did, no matter if you're going to say it's because of a setup or anything like that, then that's it. And he can clarify the statement. And there's new information that can you know, help alleviate or um, expand or increase the amount of scrutiny. But up until then, everybody is justified by saying what they've been saying. In your opinion about it being an inside job or it's 17 in and 11 months and 364 days, one day shy of 18 is indefensible. It does not, does not matter. My name is Plizikas. If you like this content, like subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. And listen, we're going to continue to cover Dr. Disrespect on this channel from now until the foreseeable future, because I do think it's going to be something that is just going to continue Throughout 2024, I think we're going to have to have these conversations. I think documents are going to probably trickle out. Somebody's going to leak it. And there's going to be misinformation as well. Obviously, we've seen that lately in the last week. Whether that is being orchestrated by Dr. Disrespect's camp, like the email that got basically leaked before Dr. Disrespect's statement that had this allegation, this conspiracy theory, so that now it can kind of live on in the internet webs. Um, we'll see. And uh, hopefully I'll be here to cover it all and try to be as fact-checky and clear as possible. But my name is Pazookas again. Bye for now.